in the Bible is that to us, Christianity is primarily a performance. To them, it was a life experience. We are apt to reduce the Christian religion to a code or a best rule of behavior. To these men and women in the New Testament, it was quite plainly the invasion of their lives by a new quality of life altogether. And they did not hesitate to describe this as Christ living in them. See, the moment we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, a number of things take place. One of the things that takes place is the angels just start clapping. They blow their trumpets, they start dancing, they start moving around, and they do this here on earth, and we don't see it, but that's taking place in heaven itself, that we have come to a place of accepting Christ as our Savior. Someday you're going to meet your own personal angel in heaven if you're a believer. You're going to be able to ask him and say, you know, what did you do the day that I accepted Christ? And he'll be able to tell you and so forth. But anyways, once we accept Christ as our Savior, more importantly, our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Once we do that, the fullness of the Holy Spirit comes, His fullness comes into our lives. We become in Christ. We leave the world. We continue to live in the world, but we are not in the world because we are now in Christ. And the fullness of His Holy Spirit comes into us. During uh, the months that are ahead, Lord willing, we're going to go into two subjects. What it is to live the abundant Christian life and then what it means to have a life directed by the Holy Spirit. Those two things are, 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 are together. But in reference to the Holy Spirit, once we come to know Christ as our Savior, we are regenerated, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, we are sealed, we are baptized, and we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, all of this takes place for two major reasons. First of all, so that we can say no to the world and to the lust and to temptation and to all kinds of sin that is constantly attacking us or enticing us in this life. And so when we have the fullness of the Holy Spirit doing the things that we just talked about, it is in reference to be able to say no to Satan and all that sin so that we can say yes. And the second reason this takes place is that we can say yes to the master of our lives. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And his word becomes a priority and the responsibilities then of living according to how he wants us to live. Now again, one of my favorite authors, and, and if you have not read this book, you need to go to the library right at one o'clock this afternoon and get the two or three copies. And it is called Mere Christianity. It's, you can get it in any paper back uh, in any kind of a bookstore. Go to a used bookstore and you can pick it up for $2. And it's by C.S. Lewis. Here he writes this quote. The real son of God, that's Jesus, The real Son of God is at our side. He is beginning to turn you and me into some kind of person as himself. He is beginning, so to speak, to inject his kind of life and thought into us. He is beginning to turn the tin soldier into a real man and woman. The part of you that does not like it is the part that is still tin. Now, did you catch that? See, God stands next to us, okay, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants us and is teaching us to be Christ-like. Because what is distinctive about Christianity is that we have come by grace. We have received the gift from God. His Son has taken away our sins. We have come and have accepted Him by by faith. Our sins have been taken away. Our name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The angels are, are celebrating. We receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We are sealed. We're given the power and the ability to say no to the world and now yes to Jesus Christ. And in this process... We are to be constantly becoming more Christ-like. 
Because in that Christ-likeness is when the world looks at us and sees this distinctiveness that we are saying no to the world and not living like others are in sin. And the world steps back and says, you know what? Why is that? And when they see Christ in us, they see that attractiveness then God can use that in the life of the non-believer either to ask questions or at least to respect or sometimes even to attack us so that in the midst of suffering, we then are able to even bear a kind of testimony for the Lord Jesus. Paul Tonyer is a, a Swiss a French psychologist and has said, the Christian life is not a decisive and radical experience undergone just once and for all. It is an uninterrupted series of experiences in which, by God's grace, even the defeats and the backsliding generate new victories. And I'm so thankful for that. Because when, we're, when we become Christians, we don't turn perfect. You know, as much as I want to say that I think I'm perfect or whatever, we're still sinners. And we'll continue to be, be sinners because we're living in this tainted world. But what is great about us is that our sins don't have to stick to us. They can be forgiven so that we can have this loving and intimate fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But John is very, very simple here. In very simple words, he is simply saying, whoever claims to live... Whoever claims to be a Christian has to, must, ought to walk as Jesus walked. And so, whoever claims to be in Christ, you are a Christian. But if Christ is not in you, you are not a Christian. It is very, very simple. I'm not saying that. It is very plain in reference to our theology that's in Scripture says that we abide in Christ. What does that mean? Well, it means that we are like a stone that is a part of a wall. It means being like a, a wave as a part of the ocean. It means that we are like a branch that is a part of the vine. We're not all, but we're a part of it. So when we're talking about the Christian life, there's two words I want to introduce you to. The first is that we are initiated into Christ. In Christ means being initiated into his life. We, that happens in our lives so that we then can be like Christ, which means that it is then an opportunity to imitate or the imitation of Christ. And so we are initiated into Christ in order that we might imitate that we might walk the very walk, the kind of lifestyle that Jesus Christ did. Well, let's go into then what are the privileges, understanding that we are Christians. What then are the privileges of being a child? Now, notice in our text that it's very simple and it says, whoever. Now, if I say whoever here, is there anyone left out? No. It means all of us. So when we're, we're listening to this sermon, it's not something where you poke your, your brother. It's not where you poke your wife or you, you hit the kids and say, this sermon is for you. This is not for me. It, when, when Scripture says, whoever, it is in reference to all of us. Now, whoever claims to live in him, the Christian, it says must, absolutely must, ought to, and so this word must is translated in the word ought to, that it is a compulsion. So that when we come to know Jesus Christ as our Savior, and again our sins are taken away, the fullness of the Holy Spirit comes in, the angels are dancing and celebrating, God writes our name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and then we're ushered, we have given the ability to sin manage our life by the power of the Holy Spirit, saying no to the world and to say yes to, to Christ. We need to understand that God says we have to walk as Jesus walked. And so if you turn here and say, you know what? I just want my sins washed away. Excuse me, washed away. I just want all the bad.